So me, I'm standing here talking to you, I know what you're going through. I'm not one of them guys that just comes, you know, judgmental, doesn't really know what you're going through. I know exactly what you're going through. Do you see where I'm coming from? So me, I'm coming from a place now where I've seen so many brothers like yourself that are just dropped dead. I've seen so many kids that I've been working with, I've been trying to make so much effort with. They want to change. They're good youths. They really are good youths. But what happens? Wrong place, wrong time. Someone catches him slipping and he's dead, he's not around no more. The family's crying, I'm having to go console the mum, I'm having to go console the dad. And then funeral prayer, we have to bury the body. And you know what's sad? And then we have to bury the body and do the funeral prayer. And as you know, and if you're Muslim, you should know that the funeral prayer is the last point at which you have a chance to be forgiven before you put in your body in your grave. Because the people when they come pray, they ask Allah to forgive you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if a certain amount of righteous men come and pray your funeral prayer, you'll be forgiven for your sins, inshaAllah. But look at the kind of friends that you don't have. Are they the kind of people that you want to be praying your funeral prayer? I'm saying I seen, I seen, I, I had to bury a brother one time. He, forget his friends, his family members are coming and saying, bro, how do I even do wudu? How do, how, how, how do I wash myself to pray? And you know the prayer is not accepted if you don't come clean to the prayer. If he don't know how to wash himself, he don't even know how to pray. And that's the kind of people that are going to pray your, your janazah prayer, bro. So you have to be conscious of these things. That's why the scholars, like Ibn Qayyim used to say, look at who your closest friends are. Look at who your closest boys are. Because they are the ones who are going to make the front line of your funeral prayer, my brother. Whether you get killed in the streets, or you go old and you get cancer and you die. Doesn't matter, your friends, they're the ones who are the, your last rite of passage before you leave this world. For you to be asked forgiveness before you're buried in your grave, they're going to be your closest friends. Do you see where I'm coming from? And if these people, all they know is drugs, and all they know is drink, and all they know is girls, and all they know is guns, and all they know is drilling, that's all they know. What are they going to do for you when it's time for you to be buried? Nothing. You're there, the body's there. The body's there, it's being buried. It's being buried, it knows what's going on. No one can do nothing for you now. It's just between you and your Lord. So that's why I come to you, my brothers, and I try to maybe just reach out to you to make you just wake up and understand there's a life, there's a world that's, that's bigger than this estate that you're in. And then there's an afterlife that's greater than the whole world that you're in. There's a time where you're going to come and you're going to face your Lord, my brothers. You have to ask yourself, which way am I going to face him? You have to come correct in this life if you're going to be treated in a good way in the next. Does that make sense? I have a question for you. From all of my videos online that you might have seen, which one has been the most life-changing one for you so far? Many people told me that it was the video when we gave that outside the Shisha Cafe. And I'll leave you with this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a time will come when holding on to my religion, holding on to Islam, will become as difficult as holding on to charcoal. The charcoals that we smoke Shisha with. The Prophet said, try and hold on to it. It burns you, let go of it. The Prophet said, that's what my religion will become like. Is it not like that today? Or maybe it was one of the other 1,000 plus videos that we have online. Whatever it was, I want to ask you a follow-up question. And that is, I want you to remember and record what life was like before you saw that video, when you were distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when you're thinking of that and remembering that, I want you to be aware that there are many brothers and sisters who are still living life like that. They still haven't seen that one video that's going to help change their life. They haven't seen that one reminder that's going to touch them and bring them out from the darkness of sins to the brightness and the light and the happiness of guidance but that doesn't mean that there isn't hope for them they just need to come in contact with that kind of content online and that's why myself and my team are dedicating the next three months inshallah ta'ala to flooding the internet with as much content on tawheed and sunnah and reminders about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as possible but the issue is that in order for us to reach those targets we're limited in terms of the resources that we have we need to hire more people in our media team we need to also buy new equipment now look I am going to ask you to support this financially but I'm not going to ask you for crazy numbers for us we don't need that kind of money we need little money because we have a team that really believes in this and the proof is in the pudding if you see what we've done over the last summer subhanallah you can see that the work it gets done that money goes where it deserves to be placed so i'm going to ask you inshallah ta'ala please inshallah ta'ala give it the link below and let's flood the internet with la ilaha illallah